all of uh, you from the overseas friends of BJP for having invited me over here. For this opportunity, I thank the University of Adelaide as well. <clears throat> the topic that has been ascribed to me is the economic change of this great country called India in the three years after Mr. Modi, Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister of this country. Has things changed? I was only discussing today morning as to what is the most important <coughs> proponent of economy. I'm not an economist, I was introduced, I'm a doctor. But I believe any sector, every sector, whichever sector we talk about, the proponent at the end of the day is energy. One has to have the energy, and energy is the one which boosts the sector. Whatever sector you talk about, if you're talking about economy, then you need to have the energy to propel the economy in the right direction, in the positive direction. We have two things in India presently, which is propelling the economy of this country as never before. One, the population, which is energetic, a demographic dividend of young Indians. And you would be proud to know that by 2020, India would be the most young country, the most young nation of the world. We would have approximately 64% of our people, of our population, which would be less than 29 years of age. So naturally, 29 years being the average age is the age of energy. So energy propelling, needing to be propelled, needing to be guided in the rightful direction so that economy booms. And the second component that we need is an equally energetic leader, equally energetic vision to propel that energy in the rightful direction so that economy moves in the right direction. And thankfully today, this combination, energetic population, what Mr. Modi calls his demographic dividend, and an energetic, charismatic, visionary leader as a prime minister that we have today, Mr. Narendra Modi, has changed the scenario of this country as never before. In these three years, a very short period of time otherwise, in the history of a great nation as India. So naturally, these are the propelling issues. Why do we say that things have changed in the last three years. Let me at the outset say that, well, yes, I may be the national spokesperson of a particular political party, but over here I'm an Indian. So I acknowledge that whatever differences may be at home between the opposition parties and the ruling parties, Mr. Modi himself from the rampart of the Red Fort, from where he hosts the Indian flag on 15th of August, he had said that, Every political party and every prime minister and every leader of India has contributed to make what India is today. So this is not a fight between two political parties, or not that one political party is trying to prove one of manship over the other. Only the positivities of a beautiful country as India being showcased over here in the most rightful way. So this is not a competition. Anyway, what has changed the last three years? If you ask me personally, what is the greatest act of achievement in this last three years. With due respect, I would say, most of the time, it's an act of commission, an action that you take, which is seen as a positivity. But occasionally, it does happen that it is an act of omission, which is seen as the greatest positivity. I believe in these three years, one of the biggest act of achievement, one of the biggest achievement is an act of omission. Corruption is an act of omission from the main system which has become one of the pillaring growth structures, one of the most essential components as far as the economic growth of the country is concerned. Since I see a number of people who probably would not understand Hindi, but the Prime Minister, the day he assumed the power as a Prime Minister, he had given out a strong message in the local language, in a mother tongue Hindi, saying, na khaunga, na khani dunga. That means, I will not be corrupt, and I will not allow anyone under me to be corrupt. If we have to see a giant leap in this country's economy, then it has to be a non-corrupt country, a non-corrupt cabinet, a non-corrupt prime minister, and this perception has to travel. This perception has to travel across the country, throughout the globe. And I'm thankful today, and I can say standing here with a great deal of pride, that one of the most essential components for the growth of Indian economy today is this act of omission 
and the actors, no corruption. What are the parameters why we say that India has moved from fragile five to fabulous few? It was only in 2013, I remember, there was, a, there was an article in the newspaper which had my heart skip a few beats, that India has entered into the territory of fragile five. We had Brazil, we had India, we had Indonesia, we had Turkey, and we had South Africa. These five countries were named as the fragile five of economy. That, well, yes, these countries are not doing well, that the economy is coming down. These are not the destinations where one should invest. So naturally, it was something which carried a bad perception about India across. Investments came down. The global competitive index was low. But in these three years, 2013, it was fragile five. And today I'm proud to state that we say about Indian economy that it is a fabulous few. I was a component in the BRICS which was about to fall. There were talks that this I would fall in bricks, but such is a scenario today that I stands the tallest in the components that form the bricks. Only recently we had the Global Competitive Index by the World Economic Forum. And in this Global Competitive Index, approximately 10 to 12 parameters are calculated. And it's a proud moment for Indians that for two consecutive years, India maintained to jump 16 positions to retain 39th position of the 139 countries that were judged by various parameters for two consecutive years. Never in the history of the calculation of the Global Competitive Index has any country jumped 16 places at a time and has managed to be in that position for two consecutive years. Except in China, which occupies a position of 28 in Global Competitive Index amongst all the other countries. India at 39, rest all in BRICS, somehow have gone below India today. So India was about to fall in BRICS. The I in India, which was about to fall, has, has bolstered itself in a way that it is one of the most important arches today in BRICS. So naturally, the economy has traveled in a positive direction. And that is the energy that the Prime Minister has pushed it with. No corruption, na khaunga, na khane dunga. From policy paralysis, there was a time, with all due respect to every government, I don't want to criticize any government, but the negatives have to be discussed, the positives have to be told. There was a time period when there was policy paralysis. Decisions could not be taken. From an era of political uh, policy paralysis to an era of decisive government, what do I mean by energy? By energy, I believe it is decisiveness of a person. The leader at the top is decisive. And one of the biggest example of decisive government, bold decisions, I would say, is demonetization. Each and every one would agree to me that demonetization that took place on 8th of November 2016 was one of the boldest steps that the premier of any political party, any country has ever taken. I personally believe that one of the biggest events in India, if we go travel back in history, would be the partition of the country. But even if we see by the magnitude of partition of the country, even the partition did not touch every single individual of India. Because there were people in various states who had nothing to do with partition, whose life had not touched by partition. Well, yes, they had an emotional connect, but probably physically they were not touched by partition. They were not affected physically by partition. But demonetization was one decision in this country, one singular decision in this country, I would say, which touched everyone, everyone in the country. Right from the top of the country to Kanyakumari, east or west a humble man with with less savings a man with no savings a millionaire every singular person's life was touched by demonetization and it needs a whole lot of energy a whole lot of positive thought process within a political leadership to take this bold step because you have political ramifications because you have 
political connotations falling out of it. And Mr. Modi reminded us that way back in 1971, such advices were given by various commissions formed during the government then, that if they really wanted to bolster the Indian economy, if they wanted to wipe out the parallel economy, what should be done? The answer even then was demonetization. But it was quietly brushed under the carpet because, because of the fear of political fallouts. But here is a leader who felt that no, apart from politics, if economy has to be stabilized, if economy has to be given a positive push, then it has to be beyond the boundaries of petty politics. And this, I believe, would be remembered in the history of the country. And why only history of our country? In the history of world economics, I would say, would be remembered as a step. We can have discussions on merits and demerits of the procedure. We can have long papers presented on that, and we can have a number of articles coming on that. But at the end of the day, even our wildest critics would agree to the fact that it was one of the boldest steps taken, and it was a great message sent to the generation next that you have to change the way of thinking. <coughs> it's not hard currency. It has to be digital. It has to be smart. A country with a huge parallel economy. Astonishing. We all knew it. Astonishing fact is, we all knew that there was black trading going on in real estate. There was a portion, if you wanted to buy a piece of land <coughs> in a major, major city in the country, then there was a portion which was paid as white currency through check, which was taxable, but a large amount which was not taxable as black currency. Despite everyone knowing this, sometimes I wonder why it took so many years for someone to stand against it, to speak against it, to act against it. And this, I believe, is the energy that I was talking about. Leadership has to have energy. Everything comes thereafter. You have to have the boldness. You have to think beyond. You have to think out of the box. You have to act, not just think. Probably everyone else might have thought that, well, yes, this should be done. The parallel economy had to, like, had to go out. The black money market had to be stopped. But how many thought that, let me do it? Probably they were not sure. This, this shows two things. One, that Mr. Modi is committed for the cause beyond the boundaries of politics. And secondly, and very interestingly, it shows that Mr. Modi is confident that the people of this nation, people of India, they understand what is good for them. And I tell you, friends, the best part was 125 crore Indians, 1.25 billion Indians, just imagine. I think the population of Australia would be 25 million, if I'm right, I may be wrong, somewhere around that. So 1.25 billion Indians, every single Indian affected by A, in some way or other, there were hassles and problems in every single household, but look at the maturity level of Indians. There was no writing on the street, nothing went astray, no law and order situation in the country. And despite the fact that people spend quite a lot of time in the queues, despite the fact that people had some bad experiences, because suddenly, suddenly they didn't know how to act. But yet, the nod for Mr. Modi and the yes for the government was a huge <coughs> one. And the answer came democratically only when the biggest state of the country went to elections recently and the Bharatiya Janata Party under the leadership of the Prime Minister got 325 seats. <laughs> See, this is a beautiful synergy. The energy of the leader and the acceptance by the people of the country, despite the fact, despite the fact that they realized that life would be pained for a while. And only when the synergy, this friendship between the government between the leader and the people takes place, only then you realize that the next level in economy has arrived. Economy, I, I, I'm not an economist, but I firmly believe economy is not just about numbers or number crunching or number fudging as our opposition, uh, uh, <laughs> jugglery of numbers as our opposition quite often claims us with. 
I believe it is beyond that. It is about vision. And in vision, you may fall, you may stumble. But if you have a vision, one day the graph will surely go up. And that's the reason as to why in this three years, the six major parameters of Indian economy has really gone up. From somewhere less than 6 percentage GDP growth rate that we had for two consecutive years prior to Mr. Modi becoming the Prime Minister. From there, as rightly pointed out by Dr. Purnendu, one of the biggest engines of growth across the world. Today, we are the fastest growing economy of the G20 nations. We are the bright spot, as rightly pointed out by the IMF. The managing director of IMF only recently came to India and said that. She said that India is a bright spot amongst the gloomy scenario that we are seeing in the international market. From there, from below 6 to 7 plus GDP and a bright spot, I believe it's a great achievement. This is one point. Then we have the fiscal deficit, which is well managed at 3.2 percentage, fast moving towards 3. We have the CAD, the current account deficit, well managed now, which was once out of hand. The inflation, which is almost touched double digit, has come down within control and has been tamed. So naturally, every parameter, every parameter you would see of the Indian economy is controlled. The rupee dollar exchange rate is a healthy one compared to what it was a few years ago, is a stable one compared to what it was a few years ago. So naturally all the six parameters today stand tall as far as Indian economy is concerned. From fragile five to fabulous few. But apart from these, there are certain subtle stories in Indian economy which have to be brought in. And uh, I would like to highlight those as well. The Modi government always has talked about reform to transform. It has been a story of reforming to transform. And some of the boldest reforms that have taken place apart from demonetization. The mother of all reforms, which is just, I believe, a week away uh, to be rolled out, is the goods and services taxes the GST. It is the mother of all reforms. We were long waiting for it. One nation, one taxation for one good. Unified taxation and when yes, I firmly believe that simplification is the best way of giving boost to the economy. And GST is a story about unification of economy. It is about seamless transfer of goods. We won't have those I don't know how many of you must have, you must have seen those huge queues of trucks outside cities waiting to enter into the cities. I don't know how many liters of petrols and diesels used to be wasted, what amount of corruption took place at those, what we call in Hindi Chungi Naka. That is, that is the gate through which these trucks enter into the cities. Huge amount of corruption there. A lot of petrol and diesel being burnt out. So we won't see those, those hordes of trucks waiting to enter into a city. So seamless transfer of goods. One nation will have one tax. And the ones who thought that we were having competition and there was no level playing field because some who were practicing in the same field without paying taxation now will have to shell out their tax. If I was honest and there was my counterpart who was dishonest, then the dishonest probably was faring better than the honest. So the honest always were cribbing. Why am I suffering? Because I'm being honest. But with GST, honesty has been awarded. In demonetization, honesty has been awarded. So the basic concept of Indian economy under Mr. Modi, along with energy, is to award the honest and to penalize the dishonest. Not to go after the dishonest in a way that it's undemocratic, but penalize. You're supposed to pay taxation taxes. You are supposed to do that. And the best part of it is, just imagine after demonetization, the recent news was the widening of the tax net, approximately 9 million people were added to the taxation system. That was the extent to which the tax net was widened. Within a short span of time, never before it had happened in Indian history. 
and my party chief mr amit shah i was in con i was in conversation recently with my party chief mr amit shah and he said something very very basic you know he is a man who speaks